Well, hello there and welcome. I want to show you something. Check this out. On the screen right now, you can see little old me standing in front of a brick wall. But what's interesting about this brick wall is that this brick wall was once a door. Yeah? Can you see that? This particular brick wall was once a door. And I'll tell you what, it's a very handy metaphor for everything that's been going on in the world lately, particularly over the last 12 to 18 months. And that is a lot of the strategies that were used in the B2B sales and marketing space that were outrageously reliable and consistent have gone shakum. And they have closed on us. There was a whole bunch of strategies that were available and no longer exist. However, that has not been the case for everyone. Like Kath here, Kath says, I'm closing as early as the first conversation. I just had my best month ever. Plus I signed my first international client. Borders have become meaningless. My potential client base has exploded thanks to your training. So at a time where doors were closing, shakum, Kath had her best month ever. What about Naomi? I went through the process you teach and I restructured my offer. Not only did I close the next two sales calls with new clients, without an ounce of sales pressure, I made a record sale for my business. I doubled my rates. It was my biggest client spend ever. And I'm going to come back to Naomi because Naomi did some pretty cool stuff this particular year. And while doors were closing for most people, doors were opening for Naomi. What about John here? John Weikart. He says, I got 73 leads via LinkedIn, 12 meetings booked, 12 meetings booked, two leads of my core product, two, two sales of my core product, and I have two more decisions pending. I did that in two weeks. So once again, doors are closing, not for John Weikart. 73 leads in two weeks, 12 meetings in two weeks, that's six meetings uh, per week, two sales of his core product, which is a bigger, bigger ticket item. And he did that. So here's my question for you. If doors are closing or seemingly closing for a lot of people, however, doors are opening for other people, why is that happening? So here's what I want you to do. On the screen right now, you can see a participation bonus. And whether you're watching this as a Facebook Live, whether you're watching this on the Zoom call, whether we throw this up onto our YouTube channel, I want you to leave a comment. <clears throat> Here's my question. This is a participation bonus. On the screen right now, you can see a gift that we would love to give to you. It's called our Shift Happens Report, our B2B sales and marketing wrap up for 2021. And it goes into a lot of the little uh, detailed focused tactical changes that have taken place over the last 12 months. Now, today I'm not going to go into the minutia of all the different tactical changes. We're going to start big and then we're going to focus on getting meetings, attracting opportunities and scale. But we pull something like this together every year. <clears throat> So we can outline things that are happening in email marketing, social media marketing, content marketing, sales processes, all these different things. And this here, guys and gals, is a participation bonus. And how do you get this participation bonus? All you need to do is type the word why, question mark. <laughs> That's all I want you to do. I want you to open up your brains and I want you to turn on your curious brain. And I've talked about how doors are closing. <clears throat> But however, for other people, doors are opening. And all I want you to do is ask the question, why? But why, James? Why is that so? Because I want to know, I want to know that you're engaged, that you're participating, because the more that you put in to something like this, the more value that you are going to get from it. This is not going to be like, I don't know, watching an episode of, of The Bachelor where you kick back with your popcorn. Business like life is not a passive exercise and either are my online events just like this one. And if you type why, you will get this participation bonus shift happens. And I can see people participating in the Zoom discussion and I can also see people participating in the Facebook group. So that is terrific rock and roll.
we are here. We are focused. Let's get into it. And as I said, we're going to start high level. And I want to introduce an umbrella trend. And the umbrella trend has been happening for some years now. It's also a trend that happens within an individual organization. As the business grows and the organization gets a little bit smarter or as the business owner begins to get a little bit smarter, there is a strategic and mindset shift from push to pull marketing. And particularly what we have seen in our world over the last 12 to 18 months is a very profound shift away from push marketing to pull marketing. So once again, I want you to participate. Can anyone give me an example of push marketing or push sales? Push sales and marketing. I can see more people typing why. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Anushka. Thank you, Vicky. But what's an example of push marketing? So push marketing is where you push yourself onto the customer or client. And the funny thing is, is when I talk about push versus pull, a lot of people see this as a, as a tactical thing. So push marketing, they go, okay, well, advertising would be push marketing because I'm pushing myself onto that particular person. Who wants to give me an example, another example of push marketing? And let me remind you, by participating, you will get our participation bonus, which you won't get if you don't participate. And to participate, all you need to do is leave a comment. So I can see people like Gabriel and Simon and Alana. Oh no, Alana has participated. Get involved. So push marketing, I gave the example of advertising. A lot of people will cite that as an example of push marketing. Another form of push marketing might be cold calling people because you're pushing yourself onto someone or a cold email might be another way, uh, another way of looking at push marketing. Push marketing can be characterized by one thing in particular. It's pushy. <laughs> what a surprise. My, uh, my seven-year-old son has a great joke. It goes like this. You ready? What's brown and sticky? What's brown and sticky? A stick. Anyway, push marketing is pushy. And unfortunately, no one really likes pushy people. So when people talk about the difference between push marketing and pull marketing, often they'll talk about tactics. They'll talk about something like cold calling, or they'll talk about something like cold emailing, or they might talk about advertising. You know what? Those are tactics. And even those tactics can be applied in ways that are pull. When I talk about the difference between push and pull marketing, I'm usually talking about mindset. But one of the big shifts over the last 12 months is that a lot of the really pushy strategies we're the best, contact us for a free consultation or no obligation quote uh, are no longer really working anymore. So what's the distinction then? If push is all about pushy, what's pull? Pull is where you position yourself as the prize, yeah? And it's not just about tactics. It's not just about strategies. Once again, it's about mindset. And if you go into sales and marketing thinking, you know what, I am going to position myself as the prize, that is going to force me to reframe all the tactical and all the strategic things that I'm doing in my world right now. So I've got another question for you. Are you ready? This is another way to participate. Here's something that I want you to do. I want you to future pace. I want you to tap out, I am the prize. <gasps> Wow, that sounds, uh, I don't know, that sounds like boasting, doesn't it? I want you to type, I am the prize. Now, Australians are particularly not very good at this. You can tell by my voice, my accent, that I am Australian. And every Australian will have heard of tall poppy syndrome, which is, uh, I don't know, when we put up our hand and we go, yeah, we're the best, or I'm feeling great, or I'm the best at something, uh, a lot of other people will knock that person down. They'll knock the top off that tall poppy syndrome. Fortunately, it seems to be a mindset or a, I don't, I don't know, a national way of thinking that is moving into the past. But I will encourage you right now to write, I am the prize, just like Irene, just like Gabriel. I am the prize. I think, LOL. No, Gabriel, say so you are. And the reason why is that I want you to front, I want you to future pace. I want you to be thinking ahead. I want you to be forward projecting over the next 12 months. And I want you to be thinking, I've got what other people want. <laughs> Everybody wants a little bit of what I got because I am the prize. 
And if you go into sales and marketing thinking about things that way, you are less likely to be pushy. You are less likely to come across as needy or desperate. You are less likely to have sales breath or alienate potential future customers or clients. So good on you, all those people. Alana said, I am the freaking prize. That's awesome. Christopher's the prize. Also, that's cool. So one of the biggest trends is this shift from push, pushy marketing to pull marketing, setting ourselves up as the prize. Now, in particular, there, is, uh, there are other ways where this has shifted. And pull used to be largely for, when people were using pull marketing, they were largely using long, ugly links to get someone into their database and then they would automate the client journey. Now, the reality is, is that you still can automate 90% of the client journey. But one of the really big shifts that we've seen is this shift from pulling people into a database dropping long, ugly links all over social media. Uh, we call them breadcrumbs, where people go, oh, what's that? And they click the link and they opt in, they become part of your database. One of the really big shifts is that we've seen pull marketing be used really effectively to get permission. So rather than pushing yourself on someone and saying, I'm the best, we should meet up, catch up for a coffee. Pull is where you create an environment where you are the prize you pull people in so that they give you permission to have a conversation, to start some sort of conversation. So you get permission to chat, to have a conversation. Now, when it comes to chatting, there is a really good purpose or reason for having conversations with potential future customers and clients on, uh, on the interwebs or via phone or social media. And I say, why is it really good to chat? You will say trust, engagement, building authority, building a relationship. I'll tell you what, the main purpose of the chat is to pre-qualify. So we're using pull marketing to get permission to have a conversation. And the reason why we want to have that conversation is we want to pre-qualify the lead. Once again, that's very different to push. I'm the best, you should work with me. This is, you are the prize. Let's see if you have what it takes to work with me or if there's going to be a fit or if you meet my high exacting standards. So we use pull marketing to get permission to have a conversation. Now, another thing that we've, I've seen pull marketing be used very effectively for over the last 12 to 18 months is uh, permission to book a meeting. Now, I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail, and I've, been, I've seen a lot of really bad examples, really ineffective strategies being used over the last 12 to 18 months to try and, and, and book meetings. But one thing that I really want to point out here is that if you are going to book a meeting with a future customer or client, a lot of people talk about these and use their langu this language internally within their organization. They say, oh, I need to book more sales conversations. I need to book more sales meetings, right? with pre-qualified, very interested prospects, VIP. Now, the purpose of booking a meeting, the same way that your purpose for having a chat is to pre-qualify, the purpose for booking a meeting is to deliver value. Now, once again, if you go into a meeting and you've booked it and your goal is to deliver value, what you're doing, once again, is you're setting yourself up as the prize. So what's happening here is that you're getting on a call and rather than push, 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 sell, 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 what you're doing is you're delivering value. And then if you do a good job, towards the end of the conversation, the person will say, well, you've delivered me so much value. How do we work together? What do we need to do next? So we pull for permission to chat so we can pre-qualify. We pull for permission to book meetings so that we can deliver value. And we pull for permission to pitch often at the end of that meeting, usually at the end of the meeting, you don't want to be pitching to someone cold. But well, once again, there's the pull, the, sorry, the push mindset. Here's what I've got for you, blah, 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 blah. You know, how could we work together? In this particular scenario, I'm going to write the word recommendations. You are pulling for permission to pitch and pitching is not pitching hard. It's about delivering recommendations. And once again, this is another form of pull. Here are three options for you. And this one in the middle is the one that I recommend. 
What do you think? Or which one of these three do you think is going to work best for you? Can you see that as very different to, have I got a deal for you? Which of these three recommendations is going to be the best for you? At which point the VIP, the very interested prospect says, I, I, I'm thinking the middle one. Um, what I've been running through is a completely different way of looking at sales and sales and marketing. This is a trend that's been happening for decades. This shift from push to pull marketing. And as I said, within an organization, the business owner tends to go through their own evolution. They start off push marketing, then they discover ways to embrace pull marketing. And over the last 12 to 18 months or so, pull marketing in the B2B space has become very focused on this idea of getting permission. Permission to chat, permission to book, permission to pitch. And then the most successful people in this space, uh, including the three people that I introduced you to just a moment ago, are treating these experiences a little bit differently to everyone else in their world, which is why people like Kath are having their best month ever. Uh, Naomi's, uh, Naomi's doubling her rates. John's getting more leads than he's ever had in his entire life. And that, guys and gals, is what I want for you. Now, I know a little bit about you by now. I've got you to participate. Many of you completed little online forms before you came here. I see some familiar faces that have been in our world for some time, but there are some people here that are here for the first time. Um, and you might be wondering, who is this guy, James? And it's really important that if you are listening to somebody, if you've decided to invest a little bit of time to hang with me right here today, it's important that you might get to know a little bit about me and my world. And the first thing that I want you to know is um, I could be, <laughs> I could be a 20 something year old running a business from my mother's basement, getting rich off $17 eBooks. <laughs> well, I'm clearly not in my twenties. You can look at my face and you can tell that. Um, <laughs> uh, and I don't sell, I don't, I don't, I haven't made my, I haven't, built a, a mini empire selling $17 ebooks. I could also be that really classic 1980s, 1990s sales trainer with the shiny suit and the power tie with all those great little sayings like ABC, always be closing and look within to lock them in. <laughs> all that stuff, ABC. No, I'm not that person either, okay? You can probably tell by now. What I am is a real business owner that's been running real businesses in the real world for almost 20 years. My first major venture was a print magazine sold in news agents in my home country, Australia. Uh, I launched that from the spare bedroom of my parents' home. So I was at one point running a business from my parents' house, which is why I understand that game. Um, and that particular business became a market leader in my home country, Australia. And those magazines, Antil Magazine, made of paper and ink were sold throughout the world in Borders Bookshops and Barnes and & Noble and all sorts of other wonderful places. And through that process, I got to learn how to do merchandising, how to do direct mail, which is very important in the interwebs, and also sell stuff, particularly advertising packages, which is one of the most difficult things that you will ever sell. That is my background, a real guy selling real stuff in the real world. Now, over the last 10 years or so, uh, we've got focus. Rather than serving anyone and everyone with a pulse, uh, <laughs> we began to focus on B2B businesses specifically. So B2B stands for business to business as opposed to business to consumer. So if you're a business, if you're a B2B business, you're in the right place. If you're B2C, you get a lot of value, but as a business, we might not be the best fit for you. We have the B2B school, we have b2b-.io, which is our software platform. We've got the uh, B2B consulting and it's all B2B. Why am I so passionate? Why, what gets me so excited about doing things like this? Well, to create a better life for my beautiful wife and my beautiful, wonderful kids. And also these people too. Um, there's almost nothing that, that lights me up more than when one of our clients gets 
a breakthrough. Like this one here on the screen here, this is Fiona. And you can see the look on her face. She just had a massive breakthrough. She achieved something that she thought was never going to be possible for her. So essentially, I'm a real person. <laughs> I do what I do to create a better life for my family and the people within my network. But really, the only thing that you really need to know is this. The only thing you really need to know is that I sit in a very privileged position. I get to see 30 to 50 different B2B sales and marketing campaigns launch in any given month. I get to see what's working. I get to see what's not working. And together, we profit. We profit as an organization. We profit as a group because at the end of the day, our goal is to help our customers and clients get leads, get bookings, close better quality clients faster and keep them forever. It's an exciting thing to be a part of. And thank you for spending a little bit of time today, deciding to invest a little bit of time today on yourself and your future and your education. Cool. So here's our agenda today. I want to talk through the big shifts when it comes to booking better quality meetings. Cool. If you're in the type of business or industry where sales require a conversation, a telephone call, a Zoom call, a face-to-face -face conversation, give me a hell's yeah or a yar or that's a me. If you sometimes find it difficult to articulate what it is that you do, if it always requires a little bit of explaining, if it requires a little bit of time to get to know your future customers and clients because you need to connect, guys and girls, give me a yar, give me your best pirate yar or ar or something like that, or a yup, 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 says Amanda. Terrific. Yup, yup, yup. That reminds me of the, um, remember those Muppets? There was, the, there was the aliens that used to live in the flower box in Ernie's, um, on Ernie's windowsill. That's not the Muppets, that's Sesame Street. There's those little aliens. Can you remember them? They still yip, 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 yip. That's all they said. I wonder if those still exist. There's some uh, Googling for me to do tonight. Trip down memory, memory lane. So that's number one. We want to book better quality meetings. Number two, we want to attract more better quality opportunities. So I'm talking about leads. I'm talking about people knocking on your door. I'm talking about people sliding into your DMs and your feeds and becoming part of your world. Because sales and marketing in the B2B space is a process. You've got the top of the funnel where you need to attract the opportunities. Then you need to pre-qualify the opportunities. Then you need to book a meeting if they pre-qualify. Then you need to elevate anticipation before the meeting. Then you need to host the meeting, right? Then you need to follow up if you get a tentative yes. And then you need to close the client. Then you need to onboard. It's a fairly consistent process. So we're going to talk about booking those meetings, what's changed, and what's changed when it comes to attracting opportunities. Then I'm going to have a little bit of a mini intermission, and I'm going to be sharing with you I, what I think is the best way for you guys and gals to come and blaze with me and my crew in 2022. So I'll be talking uh, about one way that I think is an amazing way to get you more involved in our world if you're interested in that. If you're not interested in that, you can go have a cup of tea. But however, if you are a B2B business owner and you are interested in booking more meetings, attracting more opportunities, scaling your business, stick around because I've got something coming up that I think you are going to love. Then number three, we're going to talk about scale. And I'm going to introduce a concept, uh, a concept called the value matrix. Now, as I go into this, I'm going to highly recommend that you grab pen and paper. So this is a 90 minute webinar, but I've indeed set aside two hours and I'm going to highly recommend that you grab a pen and paper if you haven't done so also, because I'm going to be getting you to draw diagrams. Indeed, if you've already got a pen and paper, I really hope that you have written on that pen and paper, push versus pull. So you can remind yourself later the difference between push versus pull. And I also hope that you have written on that piece of paper in big, bold letters, I am the prize. So you can come back and look at your notes later and just remind yourself that you are the prize. Indeed, it's not a bad idea to have a post-it note on your desk that reminds you that you are the prize. 
Cool. So book meetings, attract opportunities, and let's talk about scaling as well too. Number one, the first item on our agenda, how to book more better quality meetings. Now, if we jumped in a time machine about a year or two ago, the really hot big thing was to invite your future customers and clients to book, can you remember? To book a discovery call. Does anyone on the call right now offer discovery calls? Is that something that you do with your future customers and clients? Let's book a little bit of time with me. It's a discovery call. Now there's an evolution here. In the very beginning of your business, if you want to book a meeting with someone, you would apply a strategy that, uh, <laughs> that we call uh, the B and P. Uh, that's supposed to be a B, a P. The B and P is the most common and typical strategy for people that want to book more meetings. And the B and P strategy stands for begging and pleading, <laughs> usually with a smile, right? Begging and pleading with a smile. And that's, hey, let's catch up and explore ways that we can work together. Hey, let's catch up in the new year and, uh, and map, some, map out some ideas. Let's, uh, let's explore ways that I might be able to take your money, right? That there is a real example of push. And the person's going, why? That's what I think in the back of their mind. Why? Why should I meet with you? And that's usually where people begin, begging and pleading. Then, as I said, over the last couple of years, we saw the uh, explosion of the discovery call. Felicia has said, yes, she does a discovery call. Now, what I'm going to suggest is that over the last 12 to 18 months, the discovery call has lost its cachet. Indeed, it's a little bit, a little bit on the nose. And the reason for that is that your customers and clients are a lot more educated than they were a couple, a couple of years ago. We have woken up to a lot of the strategies that were really popular in the internet marketing space and indeed sales strategies before that. Now, there's an advantage to having a discovery call because it becomes a thing, which is really good. You can say book a discovery call. But here's the problem. No one really wants to jump on a call with you so that you can mine them, like, you know, mine them with your pick and shovel, I don't know, for data and information and, and all that other good stuff so that you can pitch them more effectively or harder. No one wants that anymore. So when you say, let's book a discovery call, they're kind of like thinking, what? An opportunity to pick my brain so that you can sell me harder? When really they want to pick your brain. They don't want you picking their brain. So the discovery call is a little bit on the nose. What about the breakthrough call? Would you, book, would you like to book a breakthrough call with me? Now, I prefer a breakthrough call to a discovery call because usually there is a type of breakthrough associated with that call. And you say, let's book this particular breakthrough call and we're going to break through this barrier for you. So I do like that a little bit better. Unfortunately, once again, this is something that is also beginning to lose its power, its cachet, its value. It's no longer of high perceived value to your future customers and clients. One, because they've seen it before. They see it as an opportunity for you to push yourself on them. But here's the other funny thing about your customers and clients. You can say to them, who wants change? Woo, who wants change? And they go, yeah, I want change, right? And then you say, who wants to change? Woo, oh no, thank you. I don't want to change. I want change to happen magically without me doing, having, making any difference, making any change at all. So the idea of a breakthrough is very intimidating to a lot of people. They all want change, but a lot of people don't want to change. Now, what about this idea of the triage call? Now, the triage call is when you book a 15-minute call, and a lot of people do call them a triage call. Now, what I'm going to say is I'm a little bit, I don't know, a little bit ho-hum about this. Uh, triage calls do seem to work for one very good reason. Someone books a 15-minute call. You pre-qualify that particular person, ask them some questions, vet them. And I think it's an effective strategy because it uh, elevates their desire to work with you. It also positions you as the prize. You, by its very nature, you're, 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 you're vetting that particular person. And at the end of the call, they get to find out whether they get the full strategy session with you. Um, I like it because it, is, uh, it, it uh, positions you as the prize, but I don't like it from the perspective that once again, your customers and clients are wising up 
and they're less likely to book a, book a triage call because there's very little value in it for them. And also a lot of this stuff now can be automated. So we use automation tools such as a diagnostic or a checklist, a little online diagnostic or a checklist to ask a whole bunch of questions and then we can pre-qualify that person and elevate anticipation and do it using an automation tool before the call actually ever takes place. So those are three things that have kind of fallen out of popularity. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the triage call, but the discovery call and the breakthrough call are definitely on the way out. So what indeed therefore is the alternative? On the screen right now, I'm gonna draw something for you. And as I said, if you've got pen and paper, I would like you to do this with me right now. If you've got pen and paper, a blank piece of pen and paper, A4, put it uh, landscape like that. And I want you to draw four boxes. One, two, three, four. Four boxes like carriages on a train. Toot, toot. That's what I want. These are four boxes like carriages on a train. And here's the reality. Here's the reality. Uh, your customers and clients, or indeed, indeed your future customers and clients, are going to have a different understanding and a different expectation and different headaches, obstacles, aspirations, and desires, wants and needs at different stages in their journey with you. And this is the way it goes, right? They're going to start as a stranger. Then they're going to become a suspect. So I'm going to shrink these things down so we can see them better. Oopsie daisy, there we go. A stranger or a suspect. Then after being a stranger or a suspect, it's at that point that they become a prospect. I was just about to write client. Uh, there we go, oopsie daisy. You get to see my marvelous handwriting. <laughs> Better than a surgeon's, not prospect. There we go. Let's move that up to the top here. I don't want to move that box. Gee, I'm not having some good luck here. Well, let's try this again. Third time lucky. <laughs> Third time lucky. Prospect. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Prospect. And finally, they become a client. Now, I don't know any business in the B2B space that does not follow this particular formula. And what I found is that a lot of people do this or do some of it and do some bits well and do other bits well because they don't exactly know what it is that they're doing. But there's always going to be a client journey. They're going to go from a stranger to a suspect, to a prospect, to a client. Now, the interesting thing is that at each of these stages, they're gonna be having a different mindset. They're gonna have a different mindset. So the stranger, is always going to be about headaches. So the stranger has a headache, but they might not necessarily know how you can fix their problem. I've got a headache, but I haven't yet joined the dots. A suspect is suspicious. So the suspect sees nothing but obstacles. And that's their mindset at this stage in the journey. The prospect is suddenly we can talk about aspirations because at this point, they're beginning to understand and see how you might be able to help them. One of the biggest problems or one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they are talking to absolutely everyone as if they were a prospect. So they're constantly talking about aspirations. Here's how we can help you. This is what we can do for you. Here's how we can make your life better. Now, a stranger hasn't yet joined the dots. They can't understand how you might be able to help them. And the suspect is naturally going to be suspicious. So you can say, I can help you go from A to B. And they're going to look at you and go, I just don't believe you. So it's really only at the prospect stage where we should start to introduce some aspirations. And then finally, we have um, desires. Now, desires is something that we really only ever speak about after somebody becomes a client. After they become a client, then we can talk about their desires. But once again, I see a lot of people talking to everyone 
like they're a prospect or a client. We can do this, we can do that. Really, really pushy. Whereas pull is, do you have this particular headache or do you have this particular challenge? Let's see if we can be able to help. Now, this is called a product ecosystem. Sometimes we call this our paid to pitch ecosystem. And the reason why is that every single one of these blocks represents a different type of product that you can offer to your future clients. So the first type of product that you can offer to your future clients is a gift of some sort. And I'm gonna come back to that. For a suspect, we might wanna introduce something called a product for suspects. I'm gonna go into that in a little bit more detail. A prospect, it's probably your core product or service. And for the client, that's when you introduce your continuity product, your recurring revenue model. Now, right now, we are talking about better quality meetings, more better quality meetings. And it is indeed at this particular stage that you would be pitching the idea of the meeting and the best format that we recommend that our clients are using and applying is something called an A. WP, and that stands for appointment with purpose. Cool, an appointment with purpose. What is an appointment with purpose? Why is it different to a discovery session or a breakthrough call or a triage call? I'll explain in just a moment. But what I will say is that if you can, right in this very moment, take a photo of the screen. Pull out your camera right now and take a photo of the screen. I might just quickly write uh, appointment with purpose. Appointment with purpose. And I want you to do that. I want you to pull out your phone and I want you to take a photo of the screen. However you do it. I've got SNS open. So a little bit later in the day, or maybe next week or in a couple of days, you open up your phone and you look at this particular picture and you go, wow, that was really interesting. And here's why a paid to pitch ecosystem or a product ecosystem is the opposite of push marketing. It is uh, one of the most effectively, uh, most effective structures for injecting pull marketing, not just into your sales and marketing, to, to injecting the pull mindset, not just into sales and marketing, but into your entire business. And that is because this model that you can see on the screen right now accelerates decisions. There might be four steps, but it accelerates the decision. Do you know what it also does? It handles the objections on the journey as someone works through the journey. It boosts the lifetime value. And that is because you can sell right from the beginning. And it puts an end to something called black art quoting. And that means every single journey is different or every pitch or product that you promote uh, is going to be different to every different client that you speak to. We don't want that. So a stranger, we highly recommend that you make an impulse offer. And I'm going to come back to that. For a suspect, we talk about an appointment with purpose. For the prospect, we make a high no-brainer offer, which is standalone. Uh, it's not let's work with me forever. And once they've paid for their standalone high brain and no offer, then you can use that to introduce your continuity. At the very beginning, you are getting paid with some data, first name, last name, email. In the second one, you might be getting paid in time with time. The third one, you are getting paid money. Fourth one, you're getting paid money. Indeed, a lot of our clients are now getting paid for this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece, which is why it's called the paid to pitch planner. What's an appointment with purpose? Well, as Troy found, he said, I was on the phone with, talking with a potential client about the strategy sessions we offer to prospects normally for free. As I went through your formula, breaking it down into outcomes, things and feelings like you teach, suddenly I realized that if I offer this meeting for free, I am going to sound like an idiot. So when he asked how much the session would cost, I plucked a number from the sky, $1,600 for the strategy session and, and offered that. He immediately said, yes. And that's how we now do business. We now get paid to pitch and the quality of clients has vastly improved too. Awesome. On the screen right now, you can see our participation bonus. And this particular participation bonus is our paid 
to Pitch Planner. This is another bonus for simply participating. And all I want you to type is paid to pitch, paid to pitch. And the reason why is the inverse of paid to pitch, the extreme inverse is begging and pleading. Please have a meeting with me. Then we might move at that upper level to a discovery call. Then we might graduate to a breakthrough call. But at some point, if you can introduce an appointment with purpose, where someone is going, wow, that sounds like something I really value and want to be a part of and want to do, that's the first step towards getting paid to pitch. Now, a lot of our clients go through our paid to pitch planner framework. They reinvent the focus or structure of their meeting and how they name it using the paid to pitch planner, which has a whole piece about naming it. And then over time, they find ways to charge money for it. They go from giving away their meetings for free to charging money for their meetings. Now, there's a formula, and I'm going to break it down on the screen for you right now. And thank you for saying, uh, for typing paid to pitch. There is a formula for an appointment with purpose, and it goes like this. Are you ready? Target plus outcome plus thing word. So for example, in our world, we offer a B2B funnel mapping strategy. Not a discovery call, not a breakthrough call. We're not begging and pleading. We say, would you like to see if you qualify for a B2B funnel mapping strategy? Now, the thing word piece could be an audit. It could be an assessment. I saw Irene said that she uses the word assessment. It could be a planning session. It could be a situation analysis. It could be any of those things where you would apply a thing word, not some vague invitation to catch up, it is a thing. And the reason why we need a thing word is because your future customers and clients have been conditioned over their entire life to value things. They don't value you or your time, but they will pay money for a thing. So let's transform your vague invitation to catch up into a thing using a word like a strategy, an audit, an assessment, a planning day, a plan, whatever you wanna call it. The target audience is really, really important. If you can name the target audience, it's almost like me saying Alana or Amanda or Anushka or Christopher or Dave. I'm not going to say everybody's names. I'd go on forever. But when I call out your name, you immediately sit up. You go, ooh, if we can name the target audience, the person is going to sit up. The outcome is what they're going to get from the call. This is why it's an appointment with purpose. Right? A discovery call doesn't have purpose. A breakthrough call does have a purpose that makes me feel very uncomfortable. But an appointment with purpose is, are you this audience? Do you want this outcome? That's why I've pulled together my 45 minute yada yada. And that's the way that you call it. So that there is one of the biggest, most significant trends that we have seen uh, evolve over the last 12 months when it comes to booking more meetings. What's the moral of the story? If you want to go from uh, push to pull, serve. Find a way to serve your customers and clients just that little bit better. As I said, don't book meetings, deliver value. Don't sell, serve. And the best way that we've found to do that is to offer an appointment with purpose. Even just by giving it a name, you are going to feel morally, ethically obliged to, de to deliver value. And that's one of the reasons why this name is so effective, this naming framework. It's easier to explain the value of the meeting. Here's why you should do it. Here's what you can get. Here's what you're going to get. You get a much better show up. Now, I have people that uh, invite me to catch up with them all the time. And sometimes I know them and I really like them and I want to catch up. So I say, yeah, let's catch up. And sometimes I might even book a time where we plan to catch up. But you know what? If life gets in the way, I usually cancel or reschedule because there is no clear outcome for me from most meetings that I'm presented with. But the biggest frame shift is when you jump on the call, this is probably what you've been doing. You jump on the call and you say, hey, what's going on in your world? And they say, here's what I need. Blah, 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 blah. And you go away and you go, okay, well, let me put together a plan. Let me put together a proposal and I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to find out, you know, put a proposal to you and uh, let's discuss, you know, what we can do next. And they go, great. And you go away and you put together a proposal and you send it to them and you never hear from them ever again. <laughs> it's miserable. 
So here's the big frame shift. You don't go from here's what, here's what, that means here's what I need. You deliver value over 45 minutes and you say, here's what I recommend. And once again, that is a situation where you become the prize, right? Here is what I recommend. And that is one of the greatest advantages of having an appointment with purpose. You get to the end, you make a recommendation and uh, you offer your high no brainer and they go, great, let's do it. Number two, attract more better opportunities. How are you attracting opportunities right now? Tell me. Uh, Irene says, I am the prize. All right. Irene is the prize. So how are you attracting more better quality opportunities right now? What strategies are available to you to start attracting better quality opportunities? When I say that to most people, they usually say something like, oh, yeah, my website. You know, my, I, I need to build a website or my website is uh, what I use to attract more better quality opportunities. So here's the first thing I want to say about your, about your website. If you're not turning over, if you're turning over less than say $100,000 a year, here's a, crazy, here's a crazy concept. You probably don't need a website. If you're turning over less than $100,000 a year, you don't need a website. You need a LinkedIn profile and some sort of uh, landing page designed to capture a lead. Those two things are enough. A social media presence and the basic building blocks of a funnel, starting with a landing page. We use a very basic uh, lead capture page, lead capture gateway is what we call it. So people bang on about their website. Well, if I want to attract more better opportunities, I better get a website. If you're turning over less than $100,000, it's not where you should be focusing your attention. Focus your attention uh, elsewhere if you're turning over less than $100,000. If you are turning over more than uh, $100,000, uh, here are some things that I want you to consider. Um, your website, a lot of people spend a lot of money on SEO. Here's what I'm going to say is, I, I, you know, if someone's on the call right now and you're an SEO business, um, I'm sorry to say this, but I honestly believe that if you're servicing clients that are turning over less than $100,000 or maybe even less than $300,000, they probably should not be engaging your services. I think an SEO company is someone, someone that you hire once you're turning over more than 300 or 500,000 or a million dollars, and then it can make a really big difference. But if we're talking about prioritizing, SEO is probably not the best place to begin. But if you do have a website, I would say the blog. If you wanna get more from your website, don't focus on SEO, focus on producing a blog because the blog that you produce will help you create content. It will help position you as an authority. And guess what? It's gonna dramatically boost the SEO potential of your website, because out of all the things that Google likes, out of all the things that Google likes, they like frequency and recency. So that's my little recommendation to you. If you're turning over less than $100,000, forget about that website. Social media and a B2B application funnel, LinkedIn profile and funnel. That's cool. If you've got a website and you think you're investing in it, I would say start with the blog and then work up from the blog and then hire an SEO consultant. What about advertising? What's the big change in advertising? Well, it really comes down to the channel. And I'll tell you, if this was two years ago, do you know where I'd be saying to spend your money? If it was two years ago, I'd be saying spend your money on Facebook. If it was two years ago. Now, ba -bow. once again, unless you're turning over more than $300,000 a year, Facebook just got crazy complicated and expensive. You need to be willing and able to invest somewhere between $3,000 and $9,000 a month to effectively grow a business using Facebook ads. And of course, if you're gonna hire a consultant, you're not gonna find anyone for less than $2,000 a month. And you don't want to be investing more than 20% of your advertising budget on a consultant. So you're probably gonna be spending about $10,000 anyway. I hope that that wasn't a little bit freaky and frightening to a bunch of people on the call. Because I, I speak to people all the time, they go, oh, I'm just going to put $1,000 on Facebook ads and, and see what happens. I'm going to spend $400 on Facebook ads and see what happens. There are very few strategies that are going to work for you if you're in the B2B space. However, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, 
LinkedIn uh, is more expensive than Facebook per click or per lead or per meeting booked or per client that you acquire, but you can get started on $250, maybe $250 a month or $250 a fortnight or $250 a week. And you can see what's happening. So if you're going to spend some money in the B2B space, I would say LinkedIn, because we're talking about shift happens and we're talking about change in the universe and what's changing. Uh, don't underestimate TikTok. Whoa, James, Mr. B2B guy just said, don't underestimate TikTok. What the heck? You may have seen a video from me, maybe it was a year or two ago where I posted it on our YouTube channel. And I basically said, if you're in B2B, don't bother with TikTok. It is a complete waste of your time. And the reason why is at that time, about 70% of TikTok users were under 30 and had no money. <laughs> now it's about 40% of TikTok users are under 30, which means that 60% are over 30 and the price of TikTok ads are very, very cheap. $7, $7 for a CPM, $7 for every, every thousand views. Uh, it is extraordinary. But you know what? For most people on the call, if you're gonna invest in ads, I would say start, in, start on LinkedIn. Woo, woo. Wee, there's a little wormy on the screen. Um, social media, what's the deal with social media at this particular time? Well, uh, I'll tell you the big, the big things that are not, the things that are not working and things that are, us, are, are now working. All right. So the first thing that's not working, and I said it before, are these long links. I'll just call it long link marketing. And that's where you say, check out my free guide, check out my free report. Here's a link to my landing page. Uh, it's no longer working. Those sorts, that sort of like social media activity is, is no longer getting a click. It's no longer uh, working. Another uh, thing that's no longer working is that uh, you used to be able to create one item of content and then syndicate across all channels. Mass syndication. And it's interesting because if this was two years ago, I would be showing you how to syndicate one item of content across multiple channels. That's no longer working anymore. These days, you need to be able to take that one item of content and create the version of that one item of content that's going to work across most channels. So for example, TikTok, you can only have a one minute video. LinkedIn, 10 minutes max. YouTube, it could be as long as you want it to be. So it used to be create the one item and then syndicate it everywhere. Now it's you need to take that one item and repurpose it to match the individual channel. But the biggest trend that I want to introduce you to, and if I bring this back to our themes and some of the things that we were talking about a little bit earlier, booking meetings attracting opportunities before we move on to scale. Indeed, if I'm talking about getting permission to pitch, if I'm talking about getting permission to pitch or getting permission to chat or getting permission to book a call, are you ready? This is the biggest trend that I have seen in the year 2021. And it is the hand raise Impulse offer. All right, what is the hand raise impulse offer? You heard me talk about an impulse offer a moment ago as part of a product ecosystem. An impulse offer is the bit that happens at the beginning over here. That's where an impulse offer happens. The big difference is, is we used to be able to deliver the long form link Go check out my blog article. Go check out my opt-in gift. And even now we run ads that point people to a landing page where people can opt in. But here's what we see. We are seeing the hand raise post. We are seeing the hand raise social media DM. We are seeing the hand raise email. So what the heck am I talking about? I'm talking about creating a situation where you say, who wants this thing? And people raise their hand. 
So this is a very explicit example of getting permission. So rather than here's my link or here's my thing or book a meeting with me, who wants this thing? So this hand raised post, and now that I show you this, you're going to say, I see these everywhere on social media at the moment. And uh, we posted this one in April and it says, who do I know who has a consulting business and wants 24 ways to get more consulting leads? So a bit like my appointment with purpose, I've named the audience, I've named the outcome, I've named the thing. And that there was, who do I know who has a consulting business and wants 24 ways to get more leads? Yes, I said 24. And this was posted in a group with 1,200 members, or at the time it had 1,200 members. Yet somehow this post managed to reach 600 people, which is extraordinary because what you might notice with social media at the moment is that you post something and it gets viewed by 17 people and you're really, really frustrated. But however, when you post a hand raising post, who wants this thing? And people say, yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. Yes, I want it. What you're doing is you're generating requests. In this case, 46 requests in under 72 hours. And every time somebody leaves a comment, what we're doing is we're telling the social media engine, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, that this is a popular piece of content. And then LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever begins to show it to more and more people. So for example, if Sue left a comment and then Gabriel left a comment, and if Gabriel and Sue both know Anushka, the social media platform is going to show it to Anushka. And then it grows and grows and grows and grows. What happens next? Well, somebody reaches out, says, I want it. And then they have given you permission to engage, permission to chat, which leads to permission to book, which leads to permission to pitch. So that there is an example of the hand raised post. Now we're also running hand raised DMs. So this is a, uh, a LinkedIn automation tool that we use on the screen right now. And we might send a message out to, let me see, I'm gonna zoom in here. This one here, we sent out a bulk message to 116 people that were our first degree connections. So these are people that were 100, uh, what was it? 116 first degree connections. So what we've done is we've sent out a bulk message to 116 first degree connections. We're already connected to these people on LinkedIn and we chose people that were marketing agency owners. And we sent them a message just like you would an email, but within LinkedIn. And it said, we have pulled together a client expectations template for marketing agencies. Who wants it? And 23 people replied and said yes, which led to 10 leads. It's a bit higher than that, but let's just say it was 10 leads. Now, this particular tool is $49 a month. It's absolute chump change. If it's $49 a month and we get 23 hand raised replies, okay, and 10 of those people say, yeah, I'd love that thing. That is 10 leads divided by 49. We're talking about a $5 lead. And you really just can't find those sorts of cheap leads just about anywhere else. So this particular strategy as the hand raised post can be run for free. This one is a strategy that, uh, that might cost you $49 a month. And you can see as well too, that we've also been running campaigns to second degree connections and all sorts of really wild cool stuff. But if you were sending an email and you send it out to a thousand people, would, 20, would, would 200 people reply? No way, Jose. It just doesn't work that way. So it's a hand raised post to hand raised social DM. And even the hand raised emails. Hand raised email is like say, hey, do you want this thing? Or do you need help with this thing? And people turn around and they're, yeah. I would like help with that thing. And it's a pull strategy. Would you like help with this thing? Yeah, I would like help with that thing. All right, you've just given me permission to have a conversation or book a meeting. I'm moving forward and, and on we go. Now, when it comes to building funnels and email marketing and building some of this stuff out from a bigger perspective, what we've found is that the average B2B business owner is spending 620 USD on various automation tools. Now you might be looking at that and going, I don't spend 620 bucks USD per month on automation tools. 
And then you take a step back and you think about it and you go, oh man, I got click funnels and I got, and I got acuity and I got uh, schedule once and I got the scorecard app and I got this and I got that, all these other things. I'll tell you what, I firmly believe that you are going to struggle to get by in the B2B sales and marketing space unless you're willing to spend at least $500 a month on automation tools. If you can send five, spend $500 a month on automation tools, you're probably going to save yourself, I don't know, 20 hours a month. I don't know how much an hour of your time is worth, but however, that sounds like good value to me. And that there is an example of a hand-raised post, a hand-raised DM, and even a hand-raised email. We even do this via SMS. <laughs> we just reach out to our existing clients. And we reach out to existing clients, and I'll tell you why. Because it's 16 times cheaper to sign any to re-sign or resell something to an existing client than it is to sign a new one. That's the way it goes. So here we are back with this particular chart on the screen right now. And when it comes to booking meetings, the big switch or the big trend is all about the AWP. Cool. When it comes to the gift, it's about having that impulse offer and using the hand raise as the strategy. But you know what? Hand raised strategies are working really well now. Will they continue to work tomorrow or the next month or the next year? Who knows? Let's, let's see. Let's see what's going on in the, in, in, uh, in the new year next month and as we move forward. But what I will say when we are talking about the fundamentals the essential building blocks that you need in your business or your organization, if we're talking about a paid to pitch ecosystem, you will need some sort of impulse offer. And when I say impulse offer, it's like when you go to the supermarket and you go to the supermarket and you're at the checkout and things are going through the checkout and then suddenly you see a cherry ripe or a Mars bar, I don't know, whatever your poison is. And you go, ooh, and you reach it and you grab it and you put it on the Conveyor belt, right? Then you get home and you go, I can't remember buying a cherry wrap. I can't remember buying a Mars bar. I can't remember getting that Snickers. What's going on? That is what I mean by an impulse offer. And the most effective hand raise offers are impulse offers because someone goes, ooh, I want that and I need that. All right, guys and gals, I want to reset the room for a second. I want to ask you a question. It's an important question and I want to hear you loud and clear using the chat tool or the conversation. It's a really, really simple question. Are you ready? Are you having fun? <laughs> Are you having fun? Are you getting value? Have you experienced any aha moments or mini epiphanies or mini breakthroughs? Did I point something out that you were doing that you're now going to stop because you know that it no longer works? Once again, give me a pirate R or a yar or a yee or whatever. Thank you, Felicia. She says, this is very valuable. I want to bring you back here. I want to bring you back into me. I want to see that you're here and you're participating. Do it on Facebook. Uh, don't leave it as a comment for just the panelists. Make sure that you leave a comment for uh, everyone. Margaret, I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Amanda says, yep, 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 D and all of the above. Rock and roll. I am glad that you are having fun. Woohoo! And getting value. Because here's the problem. <laughs> here's, here's the problem. So at the moment, I've been downloading advice and wisdoms and strategies and hopefully concepts that are going to make you rethink the way that you go about doing your sales and marketing. Yeah. But what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. The tactics are constantly changing and everybody seems to have an agenda. So what I mean by that is, I don't know, you're, um, the web developer is telling you you need a website. The SEO person is telling you that you need search engine optimization services. The social media evangelist is telling you that you need more engagement, whatever that means. The latest, greatest Instagram influencer is telling you that you need to be on Instagram and that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to build the tsunami of interest in your business that's going to overwhelm you. 
Everyone has an agenda. Unfortunately, as I said, the tactics constantly change. And sometimes embracing the idea of building a new website or embracing the idea of hiring an SEO expert or embracing the idea of starting a blog or a Facebook group or an Instagram account or a TikTok channel or writing a book. All of those things are not fundamentals. And unless you have the fundamentals in place, everything else will amount to naught, which is why I love introducing concepts like product ecosystems, paid to pitch ecosystems. It's why I like to introduce concepts like AWPs, which is really just about selling your meetings better, or even the idea of an impulse offer. And that is because we have been talking about AWPs and impulse offers and product ecosystems for years and years and years. It's just the way that we're introducing these things to our audiences that things have changed. So tactics constantly change and everyone has an agenda. Me, where am I coming from? Well, in our not so humble opinion, and in my not so humble opinion, at the B2B school, indeed the entire B2B group, which as I said is b2b-.io, and we've got our consulting arm uh, and we've got all sorts of different elements to the organization. The B2B school or indeed the entire B2B group is the best in the world at one thing. In my not so humble opinion and in the opinions of my business partners and just about everyone that's ever worked with us like ever. Are you ready? That's a bold claim. What is the B2B school the best in the world at? Are you ready? We are the best in the world at understanding the entire B2B client journey from the top of the funnel, from attracting that opportunity to pre-qualifying, to booking the meeting, to elevating anticipation, to hosting the meeting, to doing the sale, to following up for onboarding. We believe that we are the best in the world at understanding the entire B2B sales and marketing journey. We believe that we're the best in the world at simplifying the entire B2B client journey. Now, there are some people that are great at sales. There are some people that are great at marketing. There are some people that are great at uh, all the tech hacks and the tech tips. Our world is that we want to get you to do less but better. <laughs> okay? Understanding, simplifying, and yeah, guess what? Accelerating the client journey which is why we have so many stories in our world, people that come into our world one after another, like Naomi, who is a freelance copywriter, taking on projects for chump change. She acquired target audience clarity. She reframed her offer to reflect actual things. She packaged up her services as things. She began to attract better fit clients who valued her services more. She built a waiting list. She doubled her rates. Then she doubled her rates again after that. And we've got, we got an amazing testimonial video from Naomi yesterday. She was almost in tears. This is just yesterday. She shot a video for our private Facebook group. And she said, I am selling my impulse offer. I am selling my appointment with purpose. I'm closing as early as the first conversation. She's nailed down her big ticket offer. And now she's also just sold up the first person to a course that she's produced. And it began with some, some little simple things like AWP clarity. Sarah is getting paid more for doing less. She was a generalist marketing agency owner in a re regional rural town, right? So she looked at her universe and she said, there's only a small number of businesses that I can work with, which is that scarcity mindset. Not all her clients were delighted and that's because all her clients were from different industries. And that also meant that they were difficult to manage because they all had different expectations. The local realtor was disappointed, whereas the local winery was thrilled. And as a result, most of her proposals were rarely the same because her projects were different. It was a big time suck. She couldn't pull together a product ecosystem. So we helped her gain target audience clarity. We introduced her to a concept, one person, one problem, one product. That gave her audience clarity, messaging clarity, and product clarity. And her average client was, at the beginning, was $500 a month. And her average client, within a matter of about 
10 weeks, eight to 12 weeks was $2,400 a month. So she went from trying to sell, serve every, anyone and everyone with a pulse and getting nowhere fast to getting paid more for doing less by focusing specifically on a narrower audience and giving them exactly what they wanted. Or John here, who embraced the paid to pitch ecosystem. He was a jack of all trades. Then he decided to focus on not-for-profits. He was trying to sell funnel analytics, but once he had target audience clarity, he stopped trying to sell funnel analytics, whatever that means. He began to sell the idea of more donations. It's much easier to create an appointment with purpose once you know your target audience and what they want. Are you a not-for-profit? Do you want more donations? Book an audit. John says, you gave me a great tip with selling audit as the core product, then retainer for continuity. So he began to sell his audit as his core product, his no-brainer high offer. And instead of trying to get someone to sign up for a $30,000 deal, he began to sell $3,000 audits. The interesting thing is, is that most people who completed an audit signed up for $3,000 a month, which is $36,000 for the year, which is $39,000 overall, which is nine grand more than he was originally charging. It's a wild and really great place to be. Unfortunately, most people, most people don't know where to start and they don't know what to do next and they don't know where to focus their time and attention. On the screen right now, you can see the three levers that make up our B2B growth engine. And we know having supported literally hundreds, if not thousands of B2B business owners over the last almost decade, we know that there are three levers that you can pull that are gonna make all the difference. There is sales. You can go from friction, where you're struggling to articulate the value. Every sale requires five conversations, 10 conversations. People ghost you. We wanna take you from friction to flow. What about marketing? Marketing is where you go from, uh, marketing is where we position you as the prize. So there's a position, there's a point in the evolution of your business where you might be feeling invisible or obscure. Let's take you from the obscure choice to the obvious choice, yeah? And then the third element is scale. And scale is where we take what you do and how you do, and we turn it into systems, protocols, and eventually to products. How exciting is that when you can begin to sell what you do? Get two things right, you get deals that close themselves or consistent flow of inbound opportunities or freedom to harness your creative genius. Do them all right and you become the prize. Now we have a whole lot of tools and systems and programs and processes for helping our customers and clients do that. And they're about helping you take the non-linear thing that is sales and marketing and turning it into a beautiful, easy to follow linear process. All right. I have not so humbly articulated what I believe that we are the best in the world at. Do you know what you need to do now, tomorrow, next month, next year to be the best at managing the client journey? So we're in the business of understanding the client journey, accelerating the client journey, simplifying the client journey. Guys and gals, this is one of your top jobs, if not the most top job. Your top job is making sure that your clients get amazing outcomes when they work with you. And very, very close to that, one of the most important things that you need to be doing, your role, your responsibility, this should be absorbing you. This should be obsessing you. Do you know what you need to do now, tomorrow, next month, next year to be the best at managing your client journey? It's a crazy and weird question. And you may not have been asked this question before. But when you become the best at managing the client journey, you immediately elevate yourself above everybody else in your space. You do, right? Because most people are just trying to get by. They're just trying to serve clients or maybe they're like caught in the, that, the, uh, the, the, the hunt, pitch, serve hamster wheel. You know, you go out there, you hunt for a lead, then you pitch, then you win, then you serve. 
Then you move on to the next one. You hunt, you pitch, you win, you serve. You hunt, you pitch, you win, you serve. You know what? The people that are killing it, the people that are crushing it are the ones that are the best at managing the client journey from a stranger to a suspect, to a prospect, to a client, which means taking things from sales to marketing and then introducing systems that you can scale. Now on the screen right now, you can see something that we call our preloaded year. And this is our content calendar for 2020. And there's one thing that I wanna introduce you to right now. One thing that I'm really excited about and I wanna tell you all about. Are you ready? In February, we're doing something pretty awesome. Now throughout the year, we do tons of awesome things and you can see them all down here. Indeed, our private clients get access to 30 group mentoring calls in any given year. Uh, three boot camps, one summit, one build-a-thon, an amazing bunch of cool stuff. But right now, I want to talk about this thing here. Something cool, something exciting that's happening in February, and I would love you to be a part of it. It is called, are you ready? The Complete Build Bootcamp. The B2B Bootcamp, The Complete Build. Now, what is the Complete Build Bootcamp? Well, it's something that began as the Complete Build Pack. And what was the Complete Build Pack? Or indeed, what is the Complete Build Pack? Well, the Complete Build Pack is a product that we sell to organizations. And we sell this product to organizations and we say, we are going to help you build a complete B2B application funnel. And we work with organizations and we say, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna help you produce a complete content pack, right? Which includes an impulse offer and a bunch of all sorts of different things. Indeed, we could work through a process where we create five to 15 items of content to satisfy all the different important steps in a funnel. And that's something that we value at $7,000 because that's how much we charge the big brands to do that. As part of the complete build, we pull together a landing page sequence right from the top. Lead catcher gateways, triage forms to pre-qualify and diagnose, meeting pages, all that cool stuff. The emails that go between those things, right? Because these days, I think it's like 70% of the client journey is completed before you even speak to a, a client in the B2B space. That's the average. An email is a super powerful way to collect leads, move people to the next step, elevate anticipation before the meeting and all that stuff. As part of the complete build, we offer a funnel mapping strategy session, a technology audit and assessment, which all comes together to be about $15,000 in value of which we sell for 9,600 USD. But that guys and gals is not what I'm here to introduce you to today. No, guys and gals, I'm talking about the complete build bootcamp and the complete build bootcamp, which I'm about to invite you to participate in is indeed an event. We're gonna do it as a group, a passionate posse, of energetic and enthusiastic and awesomely attentive B2B business owners. And here's what we're gonna do. Part one, over three days of the complete build is we are gonna produce content. And I am gonna be showing you our content leverage system to show you how to create five to 15 items of content in as little as 90 minutes for chump change. Five to 15 items of content. Let me tell you guys and gals, if you can do that every month, or if you can do that once a quarter, four times a year, you're never gonna be shy of content. That there is my content leverage system. Not only during that time am I gonna share with you my content leverage system, we are also going to map out a bunch of signature methods. And the reason why we map out a signature method is because within the way that you do things are also once again, items of content that you can use. And also within the way that you do things are also products that you can sell so that you can indeed get paid to pitch. One of the most valuable things that I think anyone can do is map out their signature method. We had a strategy call the other day with a guy called Scott, who is an accountant. 
a real commodity industry, really, really boring, right? Commodity, boring, accounting. And we mapped out his signature method. And from that, he created 39 concepts for items of content and a three-part framework that he now uses to package up his knowledge so he can sell what he does as a thing. Not only are we gonna go through the content leverage, not only are we gonna go through the signature method, but guess what, you guys and gals, are going to build and launch, build and launch hand raise impulse offers. Do it with me, do it as a group. Let's support each other and, uh, and make sure that you're getting it right from the outset. And that's what we're gonna do. Part one is content. What's part two? Part two is the funnels. And we're gonna do that over three weeks after the event. And we're going to start with something called a lead capture gateway, which is a landing page format that in our experience is outperforming long form landing pages. We're going to pull together a triage form to be able to diag diagnose the problem. And we are also going to pull together your AWB booking page so that you can take someone on a journey from a stranger to a suspect, uh, get them to book a call with you so they can become a client with you. And you can automate 90% of the client journey. Woohoo! Hey, I got a question. Who likes writing emails? Who loves writing emails? Writing emails, sending emails to strangers that might not know you, that might have forgotten about you, that don't give a damn about you. Who likes writing emails? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Anyone? No one. No one likes writing emails. I don't even like writing emails. But however, part three, three more sessions, we're going to pull together a seven email sequence, which is going to include the three most important emails that you will ever produce in your entire life. And if you're in the B2B space, emails are where it's at. Your customers and clients check their emails almost every day, multiple times a day, on weekends as well too. Unlike social media, unlike even their mobile phone, people turn it off over the weekends, all sorts of stuff. Actually, I probably do check that as much as their emails these days. Emails. Super duper important, but most people do it so badly. They're so desperate not to come across as a pest that they end up coming across as a pest. And that's not what we want to do. So that there is live happening in February online. Live online, it's our B2B camp workshop. So what is the investment? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run through two things. I'm going to run through what the investment is um, and I've also got some rewards for the proactive and the rewards for the proactive are rewards for people who are interested in participating in this live event and are going to, and want to commit today. So what's the investment? All right. So in our world, yeah, as I said, uh, we have uh, something called the complete build normally, and we sell that for $9,600 and we deliver a strategy. We build the stuff. And then we give the person support so that they can start to fill that funnel. And that there for 9,600 USD, everything we do is in US dollars, is outstanding value for the right type of business. And if you would like us to step into your organization and completely build up your B2B application funnel, reach out, let me know, and we will make that happen. We also have a bunch of different courses and a bunch of different training programs that you might be aware of. We have uh, the pointy end, which is about sales. It's about the pointy end of the deal. We have the recipe, which is about collecting leads. Uh, we have selling at scale. And we sell these programs for $1,997. And they're, uh, they're standalone programs, uh, largely self-paced. And we've been selling those programs for almost 10 years now. And people get outstanding value because they know that one client is probably worth more than $2,000, yeah? Is that the case in your world? One client is worth more than $2,000. And if we can help you make money, if we can help you save money, if we can do both while also helping you avoid big time consuming mistakes, that's when we all win. That's when things go really, really well. And that's what we're in the business of doing. So a training program for $1,997 uh, USD, 
to nail the point end of the deal or, or nail the top end of the funnel or nail selling at scale uh, for most businesses is an absolute no brainer, which is one of the reasons why those programs are so successful. So what therefore is, what's the investment for uh, the complete build? Are you ready? It is, well, firstly, let me tell you the complete build contains a little bit of the pointy end, a little bit of the recipe and a little bit of selling at scale. It's, uh, it includes a whole ton of components from the recipe, but rather than doing it self-paced, we're gonna do it live. And the investment is, drum roll please, One five zero zero USD, or five hundred times three. Now, to really put this in perspective, you could go out to an agency and you could say, "Hey, can you please create for me five to fifteen items of content?" And they will say, "Sure, I'll do that, and I'll charge you seven thousand dollars." And I know that because that's how much we would charge. You could go to another agency and you could say, "Hey, can you please build my funnel?" Can you build that out for me? And they'll say, yeah, not a problem. $10,000. At the top, maybe 3,000 at the bottom. And they'll build it for you, right? You won't know how to drive it or manage it, but they'll build it for you. You could go to a PR firm, right? Or a, an expensive publicist and say, write my emails and pay a stack of cash to a bunch of people who have never written an effective email in their life. And then they'll give it to you and you'll have a bunch of emails, but you won't have any skills. Or you could decide that 500 times three might be exactly what you need at this time of year to get the fundamentals in place within your business to be able to embrace any tactic or any strategy that the universe is going to throw at you over the next 12 months. So what are my rewards for the proactive? Number one, we have an insanely... Uh, an insane early bird rate, which expires the 31st of December. The full rate is $3,000. That's what we're charging for this particular event. But for you, as I just said, is $1,500. After the 31st of December, it's going to go up to $2,000. And after, uh, I think it's the 11th of January, I can't remember what the date is. Maybe it's the 14th of January or the 19th of January. I can't remember. It goes up to 2,500. And then the, uh, the 28th of January, it goes up to 3,000. So we have an, insanely, uh, an insane early bird rate, which is half the, uh, half, the, half the total price. But that expires on the 31st of December. We also have an, an insanely long money back guarantee, 60 days. I don't know if anyone wants to map that out, but 60 days, are you ready? 60 days as of yesterday is Valentine's Day, right? That's how long you've got, right? If you, if you change your mind or if your circumstances change or if you feel it's not right for you, you've got until the 14th of February to let us know. Also, and I think that you are going to love this, is that if you sign up today right now, we're going to set you up to have a content mapping strategy call in January. Now, this is something that I believe is priceless. And that is an opportunity to jump on a Zoom call one-to-one -one and have someone work with you to help you map your content strategy. Those are three rewards for the proactive. We have our $1,500 rate expires on the 31st of January. We've got our insanely long money back guarantee. And we also have a content mapping strategy call. But you know what? I've also got two bonuses that are today only. Here is the bonus that is today only. If you want us to, we will design the, uh, we will design your, uh, your impulse offer. We'll show you how to write it, produce the content, and then we'll take over the design piece. If you want us to, as I said, that there is something that, uh, that there is something that uh, the big brands pass the big bucks for. That's today only. The second thing today only is that I have a forever bonus. And on the screen right now, you can see our ultimate funnel fillers. And there are five. LinkedIn for leads, strategic alliances and partnerships, network reactivation, closed loop advertising, website lead generation boosters. We sell these for $495 each. 
And as a forever bonus for today only, you will get one of these packs. What do I mean as a forever bonus? I've totally de-risked this for you. I've totally de-risked this for you. We have a 60-day uh, money-back guarantee. We've also got an opportunity for you to have a strategy call with one of our team, which means that if you decide to jump on this opportunity right now and sign up for 1,500 or three payments of 500, the first thing is that if you've got a business partner or a life partner and you're not sure, you can reach out to them and they can say, oh yeah, no, we can't do it. You know, the dates are wrong or we've spent our money elsewhere, whatever it is. And we refund your money. That's our Let's Stay Friends money back guarantee. Well, let's say you don't do that. And let's say then you book a call with, uh, with one of our crew in January and you have the content mapping call. Maybe you want to bring in a business partner or a staff member. That is another opportunity to decide whether this is right for you. And you can have a conversation with us. And the worst case scenario in that scenario is that you're going to have an amazing, an amazing experience, a content mapping call. And then still, if you turn around and say, you know what, I don't think this is right for me. Can you please refund my money? We are still going to give you one of these that you can keep forever, no matter what. So there you go, guys and gals. That there is my offer for you today. If you're interested, head over to B2B School, HTTP, da, 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 B2B School. Actually, it's not B2B School. I think it's actually B2B Dash. B2B Dash.io forward slash December. All right, click the link in the comments rather than the, the rather than the, uh, rather than what I have on the screen, it should be, I believe, and I'm just gonna test this on my other screen, uh, b2b-.io forward slash December. Yeah, that's where you wanna go, cool. And if you wanna go there, that's how to get started. And in a little bit, I'll explain what happens next. But first I have something important that we need to run through. And that is part three. Yes, part three, we've talked about building. Sorry, we've talked about booking meetings. We've talked about attracting opportunities. And number three is scale. And radical transparency. I'm going to just share with you one strategy because we don't have much time left. I'm going to share with you just one strategy that has been a game changer for us. And it's been a game changer for most of the people that we work with that have gone through this particular process. So when it comes to scale, what's not working? Are you ready? What's not working? Radical transparency, real talk. What's not working? You can't do all this alone. Yeah. So what is the trend that I'm talking about here? There's this idea that entrepreneurship is a lonely journey. There is this idea that the only way to get ahead is to make mistakes and learn from those experiences. And guess what? Making mistakes is a great way to learn. But you know what? The best mistakes are the mistakes that have been made by somebody else. In our world, what we do is we set you up to perform micro challenges. Sometimes we call them micro gambles, task attainment, RFA challenges. And you can do them one little piece at a time. And you work with other people and you work as a group. But there's a lot of people out there that have drunk the Kool-Aid and they think that they need to do everything on their own because that's what I'm supposed to do as a small business owner. Roll up my sleeves, get it done and possibly drown under the pressure. You cannot do all this alone. Yeah. So as I said, I wanted to finish, uh, I wanted to finish on a strategy that I, that I believe has been a game changer for a lot of the people in our world. I introduced the idea of getting paid more for doing less, which is a fairly confronting idea for a lot of people in our world in the B2B space. We say, we're going to teach you how to get paid more for doing less and people turn around to us and here's what they say. They say, oh, I don't want to compromise my value. I don't want to compromise what it is that I do. Let's not compromise the, your value. Let's get you paid more for doing less while delighting your customers 
by giving them extra value. Yeah? Cool. Um, here's the value matrix. Are you ready? This is about analyzing all the different ways that you support your customers and clients in any given month, in any given week, in any given year. And the left indice is all about effort. It's all about input. It's all about time. So the higher that we go, the more time and effort and input we need to put in to get a result. Across here is about value. It's about output. It's about outcomes. And once again, the further that we go across, the higher the value that we offer. Now, most people in the B2B space, particularly if you're selling a service, live here. And it's not a bad place to be. I mean, you put in a high amount of effort, you deliver a high amount of value. Cool. And that's fine. You can live there. You can make money. You can perhaps buy a house, get yourself a mortgage. If you do well, you can get a holiday house, maybe a second car, maybe even a boat. And it's fine. But you know what this space is? This is a living. And what we help our clients do is analyze all the different things that they do for their customers and clients and put them into one of the quadrants in the matrix. So a lot of people break down all the different things that they do for their customers and clients and they go, they're all high effort and reasonably high value. That's what they do and it's fine and it's a living. All right, if the top right quadrant is a living, what is the quadrant that you do not want to be in? What is the worst quadrant of these four quadrants? Who is paying attention? Who wants to participate? What do you reckon? Um, top right is a living. Top left, thank you, Margaret. Right, top left, high effort, low value. Oh my goodness, that there is big churnville. So if you're in a position where your customers and clients, I don't know, don't stick around for as long as you want them to, uh, sometimes they're just not as thrilled as you would like them to, it could well be that a bunch of the products and services in your mix are in the top left quadrant, high effort, low value. That's not where we want to be. That is misery town. All right, if top right is a living, top left is, is churn, what about bottom left? What about this particular quadrant here? Is this a good place to be or a bad place to be? I just want to hear from one person. Just say good or bad, bottom left. Uh, bottom left, low effort, low value. Is that a good one or a bad one? Ooh, interesting. Amanda's come in hard with awful. Thank you for playing the game, Amanda. Terrific. You know what? I actually quite like this space. <sighs> I deliberately asked the question, Amanda, because most people do say bad. I actually like this space. And the reason why I like this space is this is where we pre-sell. This is the pre-sell zone. And pre-selling is an expression that was used by Jay Abram, uh, developed by Jay Abram well before the advent of the internet. And that is where you deliver items of value. They are of value, but not extraordinary value for little or no effort. So for example, when you create an impulse offer, that there can be of value, not outrageous value, low value, but pretty much borderline no effort at all. Putting together an email sequence or maybe sort of like a five-day challenge. You know, low value, low effort. It's not no value, it's proportionate value. And there's still value. And the expectations of your clients are not going to be, oh, wow, I expected my life to change. This webinar is an example of pre-selling. I mean, like, you know, I believe that I delivered exceptional value for a free event when I've only got uh, two hours, 120 minutes right? What we have just run through is going to deliver some epiphanies. It's going to help you make, uh, avoid making a whole bunch of mistakes, but it's not outside, insane value. But for me, it's low effort because I can have 100 people on a call, do a presentation simultaneously to those 100 people, put it in the Facebook group, put it on the YouTube channel, right? Cool. So this is not a bad place to be. But of course, what is the best place to be? What is the best place to be? Oh, yeah. This is where we want to be. 
This is woohoo. This is uh, ticks and fireworks and blah, 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 blah. This is where we want to be. This is great. So when I introduce content, concepts like the complete build and other things in our world, I'm doing so because I have a simple proposition for you. Here's the value that I want to bring, you, bring to your world. Are you up here and you want to be down here? Is that where you want to be in the value matrix? In a world where your customers and clients are following a journey, going through a process, an accelerator. As I said, the reason why we love these, uh, we love our paid to pitch ecosystem is because for all the reasons at the bottom of the page, this model accelerates decisions, it handles objections, it boosts LTV, it puts an end to black art quoting, and of course, you get paid to pitch. And where does that all begin? That all begins with, yep, you guessed it, guys and girls, that begins with content which is why we're hosting the Complete Build B2B Bootcamp. Not only are we going to create the content over three days, we're going to give you three sessions after that to help you build your funnel, and then three sessions after that to pull together your email newsletter so that you can do something that most people are never able to do. And that is create some sort of high converting funnel or ecosystem. Rock it and roll, guys. All right. Uh, there's the link again on the screen. This time, I've actually got it right. B2B-.io forward slash December. What will happen next? B2B-.io. B2B-.io forward slash des. If you go to that page and you click that link, what will happen next? Let me show you. So I saw a comment a moment ago, and now is a really great time to ask any questions that you might have about the complete build or the B2B school or B2B dash or any of the multifaceted pieces that come together to create the B2B group. If you've got any questions about any of those things, now's a really great time to do it. Because as I said, I'd set aside uh, uh, two hours, which means that I've got around 15 more minutes before I turn into a pumpkin, yeah? <laughs> before I turn into a pumpkin. Hey, this is going to get a little bit weird and meta. Uh, on the screen right now, you can see you can see our Facebook group showing the thing that shows the thing that we're doing that's going to be showing the thing. Gee, that's, that's, that's going to be super weird. It's a little bit laggy, a little bit behind. All right, so what's going to happen next? Here's what's going to happen next. Let me show you. Um, if you click that link and go to that particular page, you're going to find a page that looks like this. And it says, do you qualify? Apply below to get started. And it's going to ask you three questions. Are you B2B, B2C, something else? We really, really hope that you are B2B. If you're B2C, complete the form, put, put in the deposit, book the time with John, and we'll tell you whether you can stick around or not. Or if you're something else, like, you know, I'm business to government because I work with schools or local councils or something like that, right? But with a B2B school, so that's the first, first question. Now, I also just want you to observe here that this is a version of a triage form, which you can now be run online. And we use B2B-.io, B2B. And when I clicked it, bam, it just happens, right? A great form of lead capture gateway or triage form. Gets people just in because they click a button and it happens. How much is a client worth to you in the first month? Is a client worth more than $1,600 or less than $1,600? Now, if it's less than $1,600, once again, sign up for the plan. We'll book the call. You'll have an amazing content mapping call. And if it's not right for you, uh, we'll let you know and we'll refund your money. If it's more than $1,600, this is definitely right for you. If you're selling something that's less than $1,600, I also really do urge you to take the next step. Because the reality is you could, be, you could just be like Sarah, right? Charging $500 a month when you should be charging $2,400 a month. Or um, uh, Naomi. Naomi told us a story once how she schlepped across town to meet with a client, went all the way across town, met them in their living room, and then they said that they only had $600. Naomi's now charging $300 for a Zoom call. You know, 
more than $600. All right. How long has your business been serving clients for? Less than a year, two to five years, more than five years. That's more, more for us than you. Uh, and then which payment option do you prefer? And when you pick the option, it's going to take you to the gateway. Now, Felicia said, I make decisions best when I have a document or landing page to view all the details. Guys and gals, this is an offer that I'm launching today. It is an offer that I'm only making today, which means that there are going to be some weird things associated with this. One is that it's not automatically going to trigger some of the emails that we would normally trigger when we create something new because it's not built yet. Do we have the landing page? No, we don't, Felicia. We don't have the big long form landing page yet. We will by the time of the event as we get closer, but that's a trade-off. You can decide to commit now, 500 now, 500 a month, 500 later. At some point, the landing page will be up. You can read it and decide that you don't want to be a part of it or you continue to be a part of it. But that there is why we call these things rewards for the proactive. The less time that we need to spend selling, the more we can give. So the less, that we, the less time it takes us to sell, the more we can give you. And by the way, I, I urge you to embrace that philosophy in your own world. You can say that to clients. They say, you know, can I pay less? Yeah, but you'll get less. <laughs> you know, I, I can charge you less uh, and I can give you, yeah, I can charge you less and I can give you more because I can trade that off for the time that I would normally spend uh, selling to you. And if you hit any one of these buttons, it's going to ask for your details. Uh, and then, of course, it's going, to, it's going to go to the cart page. Now, there one, is one extra element, uh, which is also built using B2B Dash. How cool is that? B2B Dash does about 90% of the automation things that a typical B2B business owner will need to do. You can book the meetings like Calendly. You can collect leads. You can create triage forms. You can take money. You can do all that cool stuff. Um, but what I'm going to share is, as part of the advantage of this launch offer, yeah, uh, as I said, some of the triggers might not happen normally, but one of the unannounced bonuses, one of the unannounced bonuses is that you will be invited to and be able to participate in our group mentoring calls, live and online, available only to our private members, our Blazers, from now all the way up to the event. Now, the reality is, is we don't have one, we don't, you know, we break over the Christmas, but you'll get access to some amazing extra support over Christmas as well too. Um, uh, any other questions? Uh, okay, who's this? I Irene has got a question. All right, anyway, so to finish my train of thought, that's what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next is that you are going to click on that link that you can find to chat. It's going to ask you some questions. I've explained why we ask those particular questions. And then it's going to give you two options. If you're on the fence, once again, I urge you to sign up for the plan. The worst case scenario is this. One, you're going to unlock some cool stuff. Number two, you're going to get access to our Facebook group. Number three, you're going to be able to book a content mapping call for January. And even if after that content mapping call, you say, this is not right for me, we'll refund your money. Or if we have a conversation and we don't think it's right for you and we tell you it's not right for you, we will refund your money because the reality is, is that we only want to be working with people that are going to get value. That's the only way that we can do what it is that we're doing and, and, and continue to be success, successful at the levels that we've been successful at over, over the, uh, the, the, the longer term. You will also be invited to some of our group mentoring calls, which, which uh, resume again mid-January, which are absolutely fantastic. And then the event takes place in, um, in February. But if I'm talking about what's happening next, I do want to just future pace you for a moment. I want to future pace you in a weird and slightly random way that no one's probably, no one's probably forced you to think this way before in the past. So this is one of those radical transparency moments that I would really like you to be thinking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share my screen for a second. Once again, one more time. Uh, because as I film this, it's December. We're at the end of 2021. And I don't know whether you achieved your ambitious goals for the year or whether, I don't know, you've got to the end of the year and you're going, you know what, I didn't, get to, I didn't get to quite where I wanted to get to. I don't know where you're at. But what I do know <coughs> is that the typical journey 
of a typical B2B business owner looks something like this. This is say a year of your time. Let's say it's a year. Up the left, we have focus. <coughs> Excuse me. At the right, we have progress. I'm going to try a lighter nib. Progress. Focus and progress. For most people in the B2B space, <coughs> focus looks something like this. Yeah, I'm really focused. I've lost focus. Oh, there's something new or something awesome. Oh, there's something this, blah, 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 blah. That's what focus looks like, which is great for half the year. I'm super focused. I'm super focused. I'm super focused. And I'm making progress. The rest of the year, it looks like this. I'm feeling lost and confused and overwhelmed. That's not what I want 2020 to look like for you. I want 2020 to look something like this. Sure, at the beginning of the year, there will be some times where you're going, I'm learning new stuff. I'm embracing new strategies. I've decided to invest in my future, my education, and how I go about doing things. And then I want you to maintain that focus because you're not jumping from one thing to the next thing, going backwards and forwards and left and right constantly throughout the year. That's what I do not want for you. Indeed, of course, I think you know what I want for you. I want you to have the best year ever. That's what I want for you for the best year ever. All right, questions. Irene, can funnels be built with other CRMs? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, like the, the technologies are, they're, they're just tech tools, really. I mean, like they're just tech tools. Um, they're like a steam train. Think about it this way. Yeah, the tech tools are like a steam train. So I'm going to draw a bit of a train. There we go. There's my, uh, there's my steam train. <laughs> I've never drawn a train before. Choo-choo. There we go. There's a steam train, right? <laughs> there's a picture of a steam train. And do you know where you are? You're over here. You're in the driver's seat because you're the driver. That's you. Yay, with your little driver's hat on. Choo-choo. And it's really important that you're the driver, that you're the captain of your own ship. That's really, really important. But however, you as the captain need to know your destination. You gotta have clear goals. You need to know where you're going, which is why it's really great to book a call with me or one of our crew and have one of those content mapping sessions or a B2B funnel mapping session because you get clarity about where you wanna go. Underneath the train itself are the tracks. And the tracks represent the strategy. So if you don't have a clear strategy and you don't know where it's going, you're just going to be sitting in your train or standing on the side of the road, looking off into the distance, going nowhere. The technology is the train. That there is the technology. And the technology, just like trains, keeps getting better and faster. But, and here's the beautiful thing. If you combine these things, a great driver with a great technology and some amazing strategies, you're going to go far. But you know what I see? I see a lot of people investing in technology with no strategy. And if you're investing in technology with no strategy, where are you going? You're sitting in an expensive piece of equipment going nowhere fast. So honestly, I don't give a damn that much about what technology you're using, unless it's shit technology, excuse my language. Or if you're using multiple tools and you're jumbling and bunching them all together and you're getting all confused because you don't have clarity and you're sitting in your cockpit here and all you see all day are like 20 gazillion different levers and buttons and all these other things, that's a problem. But otherwise, the main problem is having a piece of technology and no strategy because otherwise you're just sitting in an expensive piece of metal going nowhere fast. We don't want that. We want to make sure that you have the strategy. Even the concept of creating content, as I talked about during our training, as, a, as, the, as, the, as the content piece, anyone can create content these days. Are you able to create impulse offers on your own? Maybe, maybe not. But however, what happens if we remove 
the train. What happens if we completely remove the train? There's you, I don't know, probably feeling optimistic or not because you're just standing there on the tracks or just walking slowly, plod, 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 plod. So we have our own technology and we believe that it's amazeballs. Uh, it tackles 90% of all the different things that you wanna do. And uh, if you're using multiple tools simultaneously, you're gonna save some money as well. But you know what? It's the strategies. It's the strategies that are most important. Get all three in place. And uh, that's a great way to do it. Uh, Felicia asked the question, do we have to purchase B2B Dash to use the system? Same question. Is this similar to Kajabi? Because that's what I have now. Um, we use Kajabi as well. We use B2B Dash and we use Kajabi because Kajabi is a great platform for hosting training products, uh, but it's not necessarily a great platform for building out the, uh, the, the top end of the funnel. Unfortunately, that's just not the way it works. Um, awesome source, guys and gals. We've got three more minutes. If you've got any last minute final questions that you want to ask me, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace, as the saying goes in the weddings. I had a, I had a slide that I presented in another presentation the other day. Here it is. This is not what Kajabi does. So Kajabi is great at presenting uh, your uh, uh, creating content and uh, sorry, yeah, at, uh, at sharing the content. Uh, most CRMs are great at CRMs. But in the B2B space, you want to attract an opportunity. You want to pre-qualify that lead. You want to book the appointment. You want to elevate anticipation before the meeting. You want to host the meeting. You want to do the follow-up. You want to close and you want to onboard. A lot of people think closing is where it all ends. No, onboarding is where it ends. The first time you deliver real value, the first time somebody gets their first big win. And of course that there is a funnel. And for the history of B2B, that's largely been done manually. Boo hoo, long and boring. We have top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Tofu, mofu, bofu. Tofu, mofu, bofu. Uh, in the context of uh, the complete build, we're going to be focused largely up here, tofu mofu, with a little bit of bofu. But the reason why I brought it up is that some tools are designed to do one thing. But however, we think that the best tool should be able to help you do all those important things and do it without sending you broke. Like HubSpot. HubSpot does all those things, but it's about $2,000 a month. And if you're turning over less than, say, $200,000 a year, $2,000 a month is $24,000 a year, which, of course, works out to be uh, more than 10% of your income. Felicia says, okay, I'm in. <laughs> cool. All right, do it. Take action. I'm sure there's been some other people that are in. And whoever you are, I welcome you. This is terrific. We're going to have so much fun. You just bought yourself the best Christmas present ever. Um, I can't see who's in though, however, because uh, I can't see who's in because I've got uh, uh, Facebook on my second screen and that is already dragging on my bandwidth enough already. So uh, I don't want to go into anywhere else. All right, it's time to go guys and gals. It's time to go. It's time for me to say my farewells before I turn into a pumpkin. And that is because the best gift that I can give you of all is the one thing that we all have the same amount of just some of us use it better than others it's the one thing that we have the most valuable thing that we have we can't buy more of it and most business owners fritter it away in many 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 ways very very sad and that is because the most important outcome that i want to give you is time and we've just spent two hours together, so I'm very, very grateful. In doing so, I hope to have helped you avoid some big mistakes, which will save you time, and maybe some embrace some new ideas too, which are time savers. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive to spend a little bit of time at a boot camp, but however, 
if we can automate as many pieces of the funnel as possible or find more efficient ways to do what you do or help you get paid more to do less, I'm going to be very, very happy and my job is done. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great night, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the other side. Uh, for those people who have joined us, well done. Thank you very much. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Look forward to supporting you. Um, and maybe it might be you and me next year having the content mapping call. It might be you and John, or it might be you and, and one other person. Let's see. Looking forward to it. If I don't catch up with you before Christmas or where's Hanukkah? Uh, Hanukkah. Um, uh, or whatever you celebrate before the silly season. Have a great year. Have a great silly season. Have a great festive time. Have a great time off. And I'll, and I'll see you next year. All right. Thanks, everyone. Great day. Great night. And uh, bye for now. <laughs>